Hey guys, it's me Felicia and today I wanted to talk about the very first art market that I've had which was during last summer. I really wanted to show the behind the scenes and how I got up to doing the final art markets, whether it's preparing some products, brainstorming for ideas, planning the layout of my table, all those little details that will actually go behind the ultimate thing which is doing the art market. So let me bring you along that process. So the very first step of this is brainstorming product ideas. So I really need to think about the product types as well as their themes. At that moment, I really tried to keep in mind the cost of making these items and like the quantities I should be doing. Because since I was already pretty close to the date of the event, I did not have time to make them outsourced nor did I really want to have huge quantities that I would potentially not sell. So I really prioritize items that could be made with the same machine. And now it's time to spend my money. So I ordered a new printer, mainly because the old one I had was just really not good enough to doing art prints. I ordered a Canon Pixma IP8750. so happy with the quality of this and it can print up to A3 as well as ordering a badge press. I find that badges is a good alternative to making pins. They're very cheap to make and you can do so many things with them and I ordered a badge machine that could do three different sizes so that I could have some variety. Now that I have all the materials let's get cracking. So during the whole preparation process I really tried to vary my tasks every day to not go insane. Was I stressed? Yes. Was it worth it? Definitely. Doing this allowed me to not always feel like I'm doing constantly the same thing and not advancing in the whole preparation and feeling like I'm falling behind. I mainly spent my whole time cutting prints, signing the back of them, and making stickers. It wasn't the first time I was doing stickers, so that part wasn't really daunting. It was the first time I was laminating them though, and I did have a little bit of struggle with that. But it was really worth it because it makes them feel much more higher quality and they're much more resistant. As I was doing all of this, my partner was helping me with actually pressing the badges so that I could focus on other tasks. Honestly, the process for making the badges were fairly simple. I was expecting it to be a little bit more complicated. In the whole batch of 50 badges, I only have one B grade. So overall, it went really smoothly. And as all of this was happening, my shop was still online. So I actually did get a couple of orders as I was doing the preparation. And on top of that, I went above and beyond and made some hand-drawn thank you cards because I used to have a previous design for thank you cards, but I really don't like them anymore and I need to work on making new ones. And I really wanted to bring the extra attention into hand-drawing the thank you cards because I was having a tough time and I was so grateful that people were ordering from me. So back to the preparation of the art market. I wanted to do some mystery packs, but with a little bit more fun and participation. So that turned into lotteries. Here's how it works. The client would draw a card from a deck of cards and the price would vary on the card. For instance, if you had a king, you would get an original, if you had another head, it would be a print with a badge or a sticker. And if you had any other card, it would be two stickers. I really wanted it to be a bit more than just a simple mystery pack that somebody would pick up and open. I wanted there to be a little more fun. And on top of that, I wouldn't have necessarily made originals if it was just mystery packs. So it actually brought more value to them. But that does mean that I needed to make originals. So I needed four designs and I wanted to really try and focus on my cat people style. I guess at this point you can just call me a furry artist. Recently I've really enjoyed focusing on that style and exploring it a little bit more because it's making cats, you know, cute animals, the best ones, into people. And on top of that, I guess my brand's identity is basically just cats, cats, cats and a lot of blue. So. It do be like that. And all those originals were done in watercolor with a little bit of metallic watercolor paint as well. And I believed I lined them with colored pencil. And the last step of the preparation 
was actually testing out my layouts. So I cleared my kitchen table and put up all my cubes and all my items and products to see where everything should fit. It was a lot of trial and error and nudging things just ever so slightly to the side so that another thing could fit. Since it was only half a table, I also needed to keep in mind that I had only a specific amount of space. But I really wanted to have everything figured out before the day of so that I wouldn't have to stress about that. And once I was really happy with the results, I took pictures of my setup. I took a couple close-up pictures as well as broad pictures so that once I was at the event, I could just pull those up and do the same thing. And here we are finally, the day of the art market. I did some last minute help for my friend with whom I was sharing the table. She had some bookmarks that needed some cutting and since I bought my guillotine with me, I said, I got you. So then I started putting all of my items in their designated spot that I had figured out prior to this with the pictures. And it was really at that moment that I felt so proud of myself and relieved that I had managed to go through all of this because I really did the preparation cramped in two weeks. So it was really intense and I was finally seeing the end of the tunnel. Now, in all honesty, the event was actually really not great. There were many complaints about many things and the organization was just so bad. But I really don't want to focus on that for this video. I was lucky enough to pay back my table fee, but that's really it. I made no profit from this event and that's just how it is. Since there were really no clients during the event, I managed to just spend my whole weekend chatting with the other artists that were here and we were able to discuss so many great things. I made so many great people and kept in contact with a couple. And at the end of the day, I felt so inspired. I had so many great new ideas from seeing all the different setups, all the different types of items, etc. And at the end of the weekend, we even did a lot of art trades and I'll share all of the stuff that I got at the end of this video. I also wanted to take this moment to share with you guys the different stuff that I ran across and there's three main points. First of all, I didn't have some high price point items, only a lot of very cheap ones or medium price points, which made it really complicated to cater to all the different clients I would have, which also made the whole paying back the table fee pretty complicated and a long process since I only had stuff that were selling for very low. What I mean by high price point items, it's like A3 posters or prints, different t-shirts, tote bags, whatever, as well as simply originals. The second thing that I completely forgot when I was preparing my setup was lighting. I hadn't brought any lights no little clamp on lights I could use or pretty decorations, stuff like that. Completely forgot those. So I did have like a whole section of my setup that was kind of in the dark and not as visible. So maybe a little clamped lamp would have solved this issue. And the third thing is that I did not prepare enough stuff to put on the wall behind me. Whether that's hanging up large prints or having a little banner with my social media and stuff like that, I really just had the bare minimum and it looked pretty blank, so next time I also need to prepare that. And here it is. I hope you liked this video, that maybe it was useful for you. I just moved places, so that's why I'm back with this new setup. I'm not 100% happy with it yet, but I need to figure it out. And I finally have time to edit videos and prepare them, because I've had this sitting on my computer for the last three months. If you have any tips and stuff like that for art markets and conventions, please put them in the comments because I would love to hear them and I'm sure other people would love to hear it too. I currently have three art markets slash conventions planned for the next couple of months, so I'll keep you posted on that as well. And yeah, that's kind of all that I want to say. I'm going to put right after this all of the art trades I've had with the Instagram handles of every artist, so make sure to check them out. It's people that do amazing work. If you liked it, give it a like. 
if you like. You can also subscribe to this channel, I make art content and stuff like that. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye!